This is Clivia Minata, and it is a member of the Amaryllis family. You can get that idea by these large flowers. Um, so beautiful broad leaves, uh, strap shaped leaves. They're about an, a foot and a half to two feet long typically. Nice deep green when the plant is healthy. And um, what you're seeing here, you're going to see two different groups. Uh, both of these were in Santa Barbara, California and um, I have to believe that their climate down there is as close to ideal for this plant as there is. So Santa Barbara does not get very hot. It's very moderate, uh, has fog a good part of the year, and uh, the temperature range is usually from around 60 degrees Fahrenheit up to around the high 70s and not a whole lot of extreme either side of that. So uh, these are also in shade, all of the ones you're going to be viewing. And, um, and they're also planted in large masses as you see here. Now you can certainly do these as individual plants. They bloom better as they get more mature and even root bound. They seem to like that if they're in a container. Um, younger ones may not bloom so well, but as they fill in and, and get kind of tight on their roots, they tend to bloom more heavily from that for whatever reason. Um, they like regular garden water, although I will tell you this, uh, but this garden you're seeing here, I'm pretty sure it gets n pretty low water, but again, the temperatures are moderate, so I think that's how the plant compensates. The, um, and so here's why you use it in design. These, these brilliant orange red flowers, they come in different shades of orange and you're going to see a different one in just a moment. And uh, also yellows. Uh, I see the soft yellow occasionally and it's less common but it's certainly out there. And the broad strappy leaf, you can see here this leaf on this variety is not as wide and actually it comes to more of a point, whereas the last group, uh, the tips of the leaves are more rounded and you're going to see that again in a moment. So there are some variations in the plant depending on the variety you're getting and, um, you know, its background. But uh, as you can see, very striking display of this mature massing here. And that's a very common way to, to use it. In design, I like to use these in shade gardens of kind of a tropical or Mediterranean feel um, in combination with ferns, maybe tree ferns, um, a butylon, Chinese lantern, and uh, ginger, bird of paradise, things like that that have this feeling about them. I mean, this looks like the floor of a jungle to my eye, and uh, I think that's a really nice way to play this in a design setting. So, um, pretty easy plant to grow. Uh, is not very frost tolerant, though. Where I live, we get pretty good frost down in the mid-20s Fahrenheit, and uh, these have a very rough time of it here. I would say that if you dip much below freezing and you don't have a covered patio or something where there's getting, they're getting some extra protection, this is a marginal plant. It's really ideal near coastal California, um, south of San Francisco, or south San Francisco area is fine near the water, but if you get inland where it's frosty at all, it's going to have a problem. And, uh, you know, fertilize, don't go crazy with it, but fertilizing is going to help keep these leaves green and also uh, uh, probably bloom, better bloom production and don't really have disease issues that, I, that I'm aware of. And, um, it, you know, I think its best soil is kind of fertile organic soil um, if, if, because it's used to growing as an understory tree under, I'm sorry, understory plant under trees. It has a tuberous uh, fleshy root and can be divided as they get older, but uh, really doesn't need to be the way daylilies do and some others. If you're uh, spacing these, I would say one and a half to two feet on center from five gallon containers. And also lighting is very important. If you're in a warm area at all, these need full shade. If you're near coast where it, the coast where it's not quite as hot, then you can give them some morning light, but I would play it safe and use these primarily in shade. I've seen them sunburn too many times to think that they can take full sun very well. 
and that is Clivia miniata. Uh, to follow are some nice companion plants uh, that I think work quite well with this. Enjoy.